Real zeros of polynomial functions. To evaluate a polynomial at an argument, first substitute and then simplify. Given p of x equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x plus 5, evaluate p of negative 1, p of 0, and p of 1. For negative 1, we just plug in negative 1, and anywhere you see an x, you put negative 1. So then you simplify, and we get 15. You can do the same thing for x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. A process called synthetic substitution is an alternate way to evaluate a standard form polynomial function at a given argument. Given p of x equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x plus 5, evaluate p of negative 1. So first we create the synthetic substitution array as shown. We take all of the coefficients and put them in a line. Then we write our argument over here in this little box, negative 1. First step is to take this 1 and drag it down to below the line. Then we multiply by negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And we write that here underneath the 5. So you multiply on the diagonal by negative 1 and then add vertically as you work through the array from left to right. So now that we have negative 1 under the 5, we add them vertically and we get 4. So then we have this 4. We multiply by negative 1 and write the result underneath the negative 6. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Then we add those vertically, negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. Then we take that negative 10, multiply it by negative 1, we get positive 10, 5 plus 10 is 15. Our answer is 15. A completed synthetic substitution is shown below. Synthetic substitution allows us to evaluate a polynomial function value through an iterative algorithm of multiplying followed by adding in a careful way. Why does it work? An unusual way of grouping and factoring the polynomial will help you understand why synthetic substitution works. Carefully review the grouping and factoring pattern and you'll understand. If we begin with our function, first we group out this constant and we factor out an x from this portion. Then we group these together, fact grouping out this negative 6, and we factor an x out of there. Once we have this form, if we plug in our x value of negative 1, you can see that we're adding negative 1 and 5 right here, negative 4 and negative 6, and 10 and 5. And that's how we get our answer. This mirrors the process of adding and multiplying repeatedly. A zero of a polynomial is an input that gives an output of zero. The number z is a zero of polynomial p if and only if p of z equals zero. A zero is also called a root. These two words are interchangeable. With polynomial functions, real zeros correspond to the real numbers on the x-axis where the graph of the polynomial touches or passes through the axis. Example A. Is 2 a 0 of p of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x plus 6? There's two ways to figure this out. We could either use substitution, where we just plug 2 in for x, and simplify and we get 0. Or we can use synthetic substitution where we create an array of the coefficients and then use synthetic substitution to get our 0 answer. You can see that 2 is a 0 of the function p. Example b. Is 2 plus the square root of 3 a 0 of f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus x? Using substitution we plug in 2 plus the square root of 3 for x, simplify, and we get 2 plus the square root of 3 times 0, which means, yes, the answer is 0, and 2 plus the square root of 3 is a 0 of f. We could also solve using synthetic substitution. So you can see this is much simpler. 2 plus the square root of 3 goes here, then an array of the coefficients, and then solve, and we get that 2 plus the square root of 3 is a 0 of f. Consider the polynomial f of x and a real number s. If f of s equals 0, the following statements are true. s is a 0 or root of the function f of x. x equals s is a solution of the equation f of x equals 0. And s comma 0 is an x-intercept of the graph of f of x. Note, a 0 or root is a number that corresponds to the x-coordinate of an x-intercept. A zero is not a point in the plane.
let p of x be a polynomial of degree n where n is greater than 1. If p of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder r of the division equals p of a. Given p of x is a polynomial, q of x is the quotient of the division p of x over x minus a, and r is the remainder of the division. Prove that p of a equals r. So here we have our setup. We have p of x over x minus a equals q of x plus r over x minus a. Therefore, we can multiply uh, every term by x minus a, and that gives us p of x equals q of x times x minus a plus r. Now we let x equal a, so we have a minus a in here now. Therefore, p of a equals r. Example for comparison. Determine the remainder when p of x equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x plus 5 is divided by x plus 1. Here's long division. It's slow and tedious, but it gets the job done. So you might, you might be familiar with this from earlier. Now the remainder theorem shown below is a quick way to find the remainder of the division. Plug negative 1, which is the 0 here. So if you set this equal to 0, we would get x equals negative 1. You plug that into the function, and the remainder will be 15. That's the solution to this problem. And here's an example using synthetic substitution. Use synthetic substitution to determine the remainder when the function is divided by x plus 1. So once again, we set this equal to 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1. We put that negative 1 up here. We use an array of the coefficients here and we use synthetic substitution, we find the remainder is 15. Note, synthetic substitution is useful for finding the remainder of a division problem. Let p of x be a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than 1. If p of x is divided by x minus a, and the remainder r of the division equals 0, then x minus a is a factor of p of x. Given p of x is a polynomial, q of x is the quotient of the division p of x over x minus a, and r is a remainder of the division, prove that p of a equals r equals 0, then x minus a is a factor of p of x. So here we begin with what we started with last time, p of x over x minus a equals q of x plus r over x minus a. We multiply each term by x minus a, and we get p of x equals q of x times x minus a plus r. Now we let r equal 0. We have p of a equals q of x times x minus a, Therefore, x minus a is a factor of p of x. The synthetic division array can be repeated by continuing the process a second or more times vertically. Let's see this in action. First, we divide p of x by x plus 1, then its quotient by x plus 1 again, and its quotient by x plus 2. So we put negative 1 into this box, then we have coefficients of 1, negative 1, negative 15, negative 23, and negative 10. We do the synthetic division, so we bring the 1 down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. Times negative 1 is positive 13. Negative 23 plus 13 is negative 10. Times negative 1 is positive 10 then negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So by the factor theorem, it follows that p of x, x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd minus 15x squared minus 23x minus 10, also equals x plus 1 times x cubed minus 2x squared minus 13x minus 10. So we're going to take that answer right here, and we're going to divide it again by x plus 1. So we rewrite all these numbers on this line here, have negative 1 in the box, and do synthetic division again. So bring the 1 down, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, minus 2 is minus 3, times negative 1 gives us positive 3, minus 13 gives us negative 10, times negative 1 gives us positive 10, then we subtract 10 from that, we get 0. By the factor theorem again, it follows that we now have x plus 1 squared times x squared minus 3x minus 10. Then if we take 
this answer here and divide it by x plus 2, we have negative 2 in the box, then we bring the 1 down, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5, times negative 2 is positive 10, negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So by the factor theorem again, the third iteration, we have x plus 1 squared times x plus 2 times x minus 5. The rational zeros theorem. If p of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients, and if p over q is a zero of p of x, i.e. p of p over q equals zero, then p is a factor of the constant term and q is a factor of the lead coefficient. So here we have p of x. If p of p over q equals zero, then p is a factor of a naught and q is a factor of a sub n.